so I probably look at hundreds of your PCs every year, maybe even every month. Whether it's for a YouTube video, a Twitch stream, on Twitter, or anywhere else online, I've seen the best and worst computers on the internet and everything in between. But despite the countless builds that have passed through my retinas, I've noticed that nearly all of them share the same five building mistakes that I see repeated over and over and over again. So I've summed them up in a single video with helpful tips for each oof. Without further ado, here are the top five things that are probably wrong with your PC right now. Before we continue, special thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Keeps is the leading name in hair loss prevention for men. Did you know that two out of three men experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35? Or in my case, 32. Thanks, genetics. Fortunately, Keeps offers the best solution for keeping as much of your hair as possible so people don't think you're cosplaying as Agent 47. You can even meet with a doctor online and have products sent to your doorstep every three months so you never have to leave your PC. Right now, Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products around, which makes them safe, effective, and affordable. If you want the best chance of saving the most hair possible, it's best to act now, since it can take up to six months to see results. Keeps is already proven effective for millions of people, so if you're not ready to part with your glorious locks just yet, go to keeps.com bitwit, or click the link in the description below to receive 50% off your first order. Give your hair the treatment it deserves, and try Keeps today. In no particular order, the first DIY disaster is poor cable management. It's arguably the most obvious flub on this list, Yet the, yet the number of builds I see with mom's spaghetti oozing out of every orifice is staggering. Crappy cable management takes on many forms. An entangled rat's nest, wires strung across a case like a tightrope, using the improper cutouts or not using them at all. All of these make for an unsightly build on the verge of the verge. A working PC needs electricity and air, not a manscape trimmer. And why spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars on a new rig only to have it look like Juice World's open casket? I don't know who needs to hear this, but cable management is free, and a little time spent tidying cables goes a long way in keeping your build from looking like it's living from stimmy to stimmy. If you need help in this area, check out my recent cable management guide for a detailed list of helpful tips. Having said that, if there's one thing that can sabotage even the most perfect cable management, it's the cables themselves, which brings us to boo-boo number two, unattractive power supply cables. Correcting your cable management is kind of like fixing your shirt after realizing you were wearing it inside out. But that won't help much if your shirt looks like this. Stock PSU cables are at the bottom of the totem pole, with the ketchup and mustard variety being underground. These cables usually sport glossy insulation, exposed heat shrink, or an offensive color palette. Not to mention the occasionally unused connector that slouches awkwardly by itself like me at high school prom. While few of these woes befall aftermarket cable kits, Bent wires and poor cable training can still cheapen the appearance of a PC. Fortunately, there's a wide variety of sleeve cable extensions out there that look great, train well, and can be used with virtually any power supply. Their affordability and ease of installation make them a no-brainer for giving your PC a big cosmetic upgrade. The next common problem I see with builds is one that sucks as much as it blows. I'm talking about fans, of course. Improper orientation? Mismatching fans or uneven air pressure can affect performance and aesthetics all the same. Take orientation for example. If your rear case fan is mounted as an intake, it might compete with the heatsink fan on your CPU cooler, compromising airflow and thermals while creating more dust buildup without proper filtration. And as we all know, having to clean your PC often can be exhausting. <laughs> as a rule of thumb, the fans at the front, side, and bottom of a case typically perform best as intakes, while fans at the top and rear of a chassis work well as exhausts. But bear in mind this is all subject to your specific case, component choices, and hardware layout, so do ample research if necessary to determine the best fan orientation for your build. It's also worth noting that having too many exhaust fans and not enough intakes can result in negative air pressure, causing air to be sucked in through any tiny unfiltered gaps in your case, which introduces more dust and more cleaning. Now, whether the visible fans in your system are matching or not should have little to no impact on performance, but having a uniform set of them creates a consistent look that's pleasing to the eye. For any fans you've mounted side by side, you'll also want to make sure that any fan hub stickers or designs on the fan housing are facing the same way for maximum visual impact. Speaking of visual impact, RGB lighting has managed to wriggle its way into nearly every modern PC for the sole purpose of looking cool. But it's also the culprit behind the next common crime against DIY builds, poor lighting distribution. 
Whether your rig is completely void of lighting or dripping with unicorn puke, either extreme looks far less awkward than having just one or two backlit parts surrounded by total darkness. This naturally draws your attention to a singular part of the build that's just not visually interesting enough on its own. It'd be like if you went to see Romeo and Juliet, but for the entire play, the spotlight was only on Juliet's nurse. Never mind that there's a book called Juliet's Nurse about Juliet's nurse. I'm sure she's a complex character with a riveting past, but that's not the point. The point is, a whole PC is greater than the sum of its parts. So if RGB is to be added, it should highlight most, if not all, of the visible components that make up the whole machine. And that doesn't mean your build needs to look like the Las Vegas Strip. If that's what you prefer, then go ham. But with endless options to choose from, you can easily scatter RGB evenly throughout your build with any amount of subtlety. This will give your system a significantly more complete look while reinforcing its color scheme and adding 100 FPS to your games. The final flaw I see plaguing far too many builds these days is the unholy presence of GPU sag. Nothing kills the vibe of your rig's beefy graphics card more than having it slumped to one side like the drooping grin of a stroke victim. This unfortunate circumstance usually stems from either a GPU's weight or poor fitment between the card and case. Although there's a slim chance that GPU sag will do any real damage to your components, a severe amount can cause some of the card's gold contacts to slip out of the PCIe slot, temporarily cutting video signal to your display, which is never a positive experience unless you've just clicked on Lyle's OnlyFans. A quick, easy, and affordable solution is to buy a GPU sag bracket that will prop up your card to an even level. SAG brackets come in a variety of designs, but they all essentially do the same thing. And if you're lucky, some higher-end GPUs and cases even include one, if that's any indication of how widespread this issue has become. Using household objects to hold up the card works too, and in some instances you may even be able to wedge a small item like a screw into the slitted gap where your GPU connects to the case, acting as a lever to lift your card to a socially acceptable position. Making incremental improvements to your build over time can seem like a never-ending process, but following the tips in these five areas will be a quantum leap forward in reaching PC Nirvana. Now we just have to work on getting your computer off the floor. You monster. That's all for this one, guys. If you like this video, please toss a like on it before you go. It helps me a lot. And subscribe for more tech content coming at you really soon. As always, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one, and I will see y'all in the next video.